Good evening, friends. It's a privilege to be here tonight to speak in the name of the Lord. And as I've noticed, you're having a little trouble with the, um, my second voice. This is a sermon. This thing is a perfect mute, unless something behind the street here. That's where a minister is, he's a mute until the Holy Spirit speaks to him. And then it becomes a servant of Christ. Now, I think tomorrow morning is breakfast for the, I believe, the Christian, I believe the Christians, and there's no designation of ministers and choosing businessmen whenever I'm speaking, and that's the next dessert convention. And so, um, I just nodded my head to Brother Vale, who's back there picking up the toothpicks to see if it was right. <clears throat> tomorrow night, now, is prayer for the sick. I'm going to try to let you out. I told Brother Vale a few weeks ago, I'm going to cut my horses about a half and two because we're just a little late. But tomorrow night is the night we pray for the sick. Now, get on the phone tomorrow and get the people out here that is sick. Now, the prayer cards will be given out tomorrow afternoon at the afternoon service at the church. And those who are out of town and come from out of town to work and send out, I have the boys here to have some prayer cards here at 6 30 tomorrow night for those who could not get in for the afternoon service. If all possible, get the afternoon service and get the prayer cards from the boys there or at 6 30 tomorrow night from the auditorium here. Now, we want to get straight to the message right quick. Expecting to see many of you in the morning at the breakfast, I suppose it's been announced to you, and we'll be looking for you tomorrow. And that's us here where we we'll continue on with the service at the International Convention of Christian Businessmen. Over in the book of Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter and the 11th verse, I read a portion of God's Word. And as the eagle stirs at her nest, Flutters over her young, spreads abroad her wings, and taketh them beneath them on her wings. I said last night I would speak tonight, the Lord willing, on the eagle stirring her neck. I spoke on this before over in Virginia a few months ago. And I know it was quite lengthy, so I just tried to speak on a few of the high spots. But there's something about nature that if you look at nature, you'll see God. And God dwells in His universe, in His people, in His Word, in His Son. He just dwells in His flowers. He dwells in everything. God is universal. On the present. And now we're thinking of the eagle. I've asked and wondered why God likened this heritage to an eagle. And then it stirred my curiosity of being a rancher myself and watching the church of the eagle. And how I've studied nature. Nature was my first Bible. I used to, before I knew one word in the Bible, when I was 21 years old, a man told me to look for James 5.15 in the Bible, and I was looking in Genesis to find it. 21 years old. And at 22 years old, I was ordained Baptist minister in Missionary Baptist Church. The Lord was good to me. But I studied God from the way of nature, the way I found him. Just like a flower. I noticed you women here with your flowers. How they say a clean up in the summertime, then death strikes them. They bow their little heads and give up the life that's in them. The petals drop off, a little black seed drops out. Then we have a funeral procession. Did you know that? God has a funeral procession for his flowers. Sure. The fall rains come and cry this and tear down and do the little black seed. Then along comes the cold winter. Wings is up and the path down, burst out of the seed and runs out. Turn it in the air, there is no bug, 
no talk, no speed, no nothing that you can find. Yet, he knows God has preserved the life. Just as that eastern sun begins to shine and warm up the ground, there's no sign to find that little grain of life, yet it's there and it lives to the man. And if God has made a way for a flower to live again, how much more has He made a way for a man to live again? Some time ago I was having ice cream with an old Methodist preacher friend of mine. And he used to sing a little song that I was speaking to you about. Now he was a real Methodist. He wasn't all he was just like a lot of Methodists today who just go to church. He was a Methodist. He had his experience. Now, as I've often said to his Pentecostal people, you Pentecostal people just got the same Holy Spirit as Baptists got. Now, we're not some kind of Baptists who church in and join going church. We get out the altar and keep one over the back till we come through. We have something when we got church. God knows who needs to do that just like that. Low Protestant type of Baptist. Not just the one who believes in grace and brings a lot of good grace to the gospel, but one who believes in the grace of God and lives it by the Holy Spirit. And I was having ice cream with this old Methodist friend of mine, and the agriculture hour was on. And over in Louisville, Kentucky, they were broadcasting and set a little 4 8 club of made up machine that could produce a grain of corn just as perfect as one that was good in the field. That you could reach your hand in a sack, that was a good machine to do, put your hand in a sack that was raised in the field, mixed them together, there was no way they were coming apart. Take them to the laboratory, put them open, they both had the same amount of calcium, moisture, the heart was in the grain just the same, Everything just one of them just as good a cornflakes as the other one, just as good a fruit, harmony, anything as the other. And they said there's only one way you can really tell. That's good. I'm sure the whistle in that is now if you don't want me to embarrass you, they'll hold my hand. <laughs> you can act like a Christian. You might dress like a Christian. You might impersonate a Christian in every way, but unless that ring of life is in there, you'll never lie in the resurrection. That machine can put all the moisture and all the calcium in there, but it can't put life in there. That's God. Work alone. You might be a Christian and be just as far and perfect in your church as you can be, but except you're born within and the resurrection will later. All eternal life, God's life, will raise up from the dust of the earth. So in watching the eagles and the birds, lots of times of great joy has it been to me to watch them. And I begin to read what the eagles were, how many were there. And you'd be surprised to know that there's 40 different types of eagles. The word itself means a carrier or a feeder with the beast, with the mouth. And that's like in the water, God's like in his heritage to eagle, his prophet, because they feed the word with the mouth by preaching. That's the reason lightning to eagle. Feeding the flock by the mouth. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word. So that's why uh, he's one reason he would liken him to evil. And another reason he likened to evil, an evil is a special bird. He can fly higher than any other bird there is. And I know a lot of people here, you think it's a hawk. The hawk is no equal to him at all. What the hawk is trying to fly, as high as an eagle, he would just disintegrate in the air. The, hawk can lose, the eagle can lose the hawk any time. He can go so high that the hawk couldn't even breathe. And then in order to get up there, that means that the eagle has to be able to see for it. Then another thing, the eagle has to be a special male bird. If he wasn't, his wings 
servants are so tight you can't pull them out with a pair of pliers. It has to be the hold is big weight, not seeing an air. So when he gets up there, he has to be a special bird, special bird bird, or he will never get up there. And that's the way a Christian is. He's just not leaving it over or something kind of a bird fixed over. He's born and made a Christian by birth. He's a special made bird, God designed. So it can go above, way high, so above the things of the world, and watch things that come in, in a distance. Now, I wouldn't dream to get up there unless he was able to stay there or to do some benefit while he was there. And that's the way the, the prophet is, the preacher, that can climb in the spirit far beyond anything. Very high in the height of inspiration. A real servant of God can climb so high till a normal mind can even follow him. Because he's a special good person. Oh, how I love to think of that. I always like to be a little different anyhow from the things of that life, and I don't like the world or the things of the world, and I'm glad to be a bit different. Just a little different. Now you know a little rain and running around on the ground and a buzzard can soar, but he can never fire an eagle. He's died. I'm just so glad that God got some people that can climb above the things of the world. Way up high. And it has to be a special bird to do that. Then I noticed again that he, the reason that he gets up there and is a special bird, not because of he desired to be a special bird, but because God made him a special bird. He is a special bird because he was born a special bird. That's the reason a lot of reformed church members can't follow a real Christian in the spiritual things. He's never been born again. He hasn't been designed for that purpose. No wonder he can't understand it, but even see. And another thing about the eagle, the eagle renews his youth. He renews his strength and his youth. That represents the church again. Because a man can be backslidden and away from God and put him in a good revival somewhere and he renews his covenant. He renews his youth. He comes back to God and he'll see like he's all washed up and ready to go again. That's what the evil does. He gets old and he's is is habits and things begin to fail and he can't see good no more. Then all of a sudden something happens to him. And he becomes back like a young bird again. Well, I remember the first Pentecostal meeting I belonged to. It was at Mishawaka, Indiana. And they had about 500 preachers on the platform. And they said, we want every man up here just to stand up and say, what church he belongs to? What his name is. And I just stood up and said, Baptist, William Brandon, Baptist, sit down. All of them got to in that day. I didn't notice many of the young preachers preaching. And, and I listened to their message. I thought they were kind of noisy, but you know, if you're not a little noisy, it's the time you're there. The time you're there. If your religion hasn't got some emotion in it, I can prove you anything without emotion is there. Right. When Aaron went into the Holy Sepulchre, they cut a pomegranate and a bell. And when that's the only way they go, he was still alive because he made a noise in there. That's about the only way you can tell the church is alive and you hear a good old man once in a while and something that a little fact is still alive there somewhere. And I remember that night they brought an old preacher out there. He was about 80 years old. He had to help him to the platform. Just had a little rim of cotton around here, an old sweet little preacher, and just a little rim of cotton around like this, a great big old, one of those felt collar preachers, speaking tail coats we used to call them, walked out there at the platform, so the old fellow took a hearty speech, and he said, children, 
He took his church from over in Joe, where they do when I laid the foundation of the world. The crown in the world was fastened. And the morning stars came together and the sons of God shouted for joy. Well, all the ministers that day have been talking about the life of the Lord Jesus on earth. But he picked him up about a million years before the world ever began when the morning stars were singing together and the sons of God shouting for joy. Going down the high on a rainbow in the second coming. He's been on the platform about five minutes and Jeff, he jumped in the air and he healed and said, Glory! He said, You haven't got enough room up here for me to preach. He kept off there like a little kid. I was about 23 years old. I said, That's what I want. If you're going to make a little bit of that, what would you do? I want some of that. Oh, I'm so glad for all. I'm so glad for all. And they said, wait upon the Lord, shall we need a strength? They said, mount up like people. They said, run like lightning. They said, walk in our feet. And oh, how the Lord does give us those illustrations. Now, and another thing the evil has, he is a bird that has ambition not to let his little ones be hurt. He feels his nest way high in the rock. And there he makes his nest for his young ones. How different it is with the other birds. How they build their nest down low. But the eagle goes high to build his nest. Some time ago, I was down to Cincinnati, Ohio, to the, to the zoo. I got two little girls, a little boy, and how I love little children. And Every time when I'm gone from them, so I don't come in, get in the house, one wants to take me back, and you know how it is. And I just love the little fellas. And I'm going to use them now for an expression. Some time ago, they sit up in the morning, they get up in the morning, get on my lap first. And Rebecca is a little older than Sarah. And so Rebecca got up first and she ran in and jumped across my leg and her legs long, hung down to the floor. And she put her arms around me and began to hug me. And just then the smaller girl came into the room. And she looked and Rebecca turned to Sarah and said, Sarah, I've got all of that. There's none left for you. And the little fellow, the little girl, puckered up her little lips to cry, and I motioned to her and put my other leg out, and she come over and jumped on my knee, and I put my arms around her, and she turned those big brown eyes and looked over to Rebecca, and said, Rebecca, you better have all of Daddy, but Daddy's got all of me. So that's the way it is, brother. You better have all of two hours in all, but I want Christ to have all. Marvelous work. One day I was up in Colorado, where I asked for the line. And there was, oh, it was early in the fall, and the snow hadn't come yet, and the elk herds were high. And the rancher, Mr. Jeffries, and I ranked together for years while we were hunting, and we know the land like the, you were just sitting here. And so we were about two days journey back at, on Trouble Street, he starts the Trouble Street River. And he separated that morning and he said, Billy, I'm going over to look after some sheep, wild sheep, mountain sheep. But I'll meet you down at the other line camp, which is about 75 miles away. But I'll meet you down there about day after tomorrow because the elk is in the city. I said, okay, Jeff. So I went high, come to the timber line. And I tied my horses down in the bottom and be back the day after or something to pick them up. And I was walking along, and that time of year, it'll rain, and then the sun will shine, then it'll snow, and the sun will shine, and it'll come up with storm. And I got behind a tree and stood like this until the storm was over, it was raining and blowing. 
And I stood there and was thinking about how good God is. And how I loved to be alone with him up there in the mountains. There was a blowdown near where I was where the cliffs had come to and blow the trees down. And as after the storm went away, I began to think on the scriptures and the great meeting. And then the sun was setting in the west and a great eye looking across the valley. And where the evergreen had flown up there high from the storm, it formed the rainbow. And all the day it said, when the dew calls to the dew, if there's something in you that loves God, and you can see something that's godly, there's just something that takes a hold of and grips you. And I remember, I said, there he is, Jehovah, the great eye looking. There is the rainbow. That's his covenant. And I said in the New Testament, I remember reading that he was looked upon as Jasper and Sardestone, Benjamin and Reuben, the first and the last, and the covenant of the rainbow over his head. And just then, an old grave was piled up on the mountain, and the mate answered down in the bottom. My mama's a half Indian. And my conversion never took it out of me. Oh, something begin to call the deep, to the deep. The wild call. Then I heard the old boy, Jesus, he got turned away from the herd. And then something within me began to call out, Oh, God, you are present. Where you are in the most call. Where you are in the elf people. Where you are in the rainbow. There you are in the setting of the sun. Lord, you are everywhere. And then I was amazed that a little old pine school jumped up. A little old fellow about so long. And he just all watched the ice and die all his fuss and feathers. He just began to jump up and down and tear all night. He's going to tear me to pieces. Well, I said, little fella, what I've been doing, and I felt that real deep call, I set my drum down against the tree and run around and around and around the tree, just as hard as I go to the tree and pop on the wall. Well, I said, then somebody who wants to set a maniac out here. But I didn't say what they thought. I was worshiping God. That's all I said. I know he was there. And the person gets some shouts and says, you shouts are no good. You must, every way you see God, express yourself to you and love him. And I thought, did I spite you, little fella? And I happened to notice he wasn't paying much attention to me. But he cocked his little head and looked down. He's looking down in that blow down. And the winds and the storm had forced the big eagle down. And we had the brown eagle in Colorado, which is a very big bird. And forced him in there. And that's what he was excited about. Well, I thought, well, why did you stop me from shouting for something like that? This big eagle jumped up on one of them, great, big, gray-looking eyes, beautiful bird. And he took that just his face. And I said, now, what did you want me to see in that eagle? You mean I could see you in that eagle? Why did you interrupt me from worshiping the way I was around and around this tree? Then I thought... Well, there's one thing I can see in him. He's not afraid. And God's creatures are never afraid. You're not afraid of nothing. So then, I noticed again, I said to him, Do you know I can keep you? It's talking to you. Nobody else there to talk to you. You see, now I'm alone. So I said, You know I can keep you? And I made out like a good reach from a gun. I see those big eyes at me, and I noticed he began to feel those feathers. See if everything was, uh, was in running on it. He knew that God gave him two wings, and he could trust those two wings. And he knew before I could get my gun to my shoulder, he'd be in the treetop, and I'd never see him again. He knew what he was doing. Oh, I thought, how much more if if God give the people who need and who not going to stand with them, what are the Christians to do with the baptism of the Holy Spirit? How are you all in the Holy Standing? Well, he's been there 
I wasn't going to hurt him because I admired him. But as I started listening to that little old pine for him, ten ten and finally he just made a couple of big drops of jump, dropped his wings about twice from his outside the timber, and then I seen what God would mean. He never flopped no more. He just knew how to set those big strong wings, and as the wings came up there that he just, he just walked down the way on, on, on. He never moved a feather. He just knew how to set his wings. And he went on beyond that little old flying squirrel till it becomes just a little dot. I sit there and wet like a baby. I said, that's it, God. It isn't John the Methodist and Bishop Matter if you join the Baptist and throw it to the Pentecostals. That isn't it. It's just knowing how to set your wings in the power of his faith. And when the Holy Ghost comes in like a voice, right away, go on, 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 on. Away from this fatty fatty here. Oh, the days of miracles of Christ, fatty fatty. No such thing as divine healing. No such thing as that with the Holy Ghost. Just let your faith in the power of His Spirit and ride away without going to Baptist, Methodist, or Pentecost, or any of them. Just ride away upon the power of the Holy Ghost. Just tell you, say God, and say, God, be still men and rain, and you just sing Lord Jesus. Ride away on His blessings. Certainly, he promised it. One day, little Sarah and I were taking a walk to the zoo. And I've seen the most saddest sight I've seen I've ever seen. It was an eagle in the cage. They hadn't had him there very long. That great big fella didn't have any feathers over his head. All his wings just beat off on the side. Now, watch him. He'd lay on the floor, take his hand. He'd get up. He'd look at those bars. He turned him off this way, so he got a start. And he'd fly across the hand. He was ready to get those bars, flopping his wings, knocking him back in the floor. He'd get up, look at the bars somewhere else, walk back, get a start, and here he comes. He'd bump his head till he'd beat his head so he had no feathers on his head or on his wings. And then the time knocked him out the floor, and he laid there. And his weary eyes. As he looked towards the sky, that was it. He was a heavenly bird. He was born to fall in the sky. And here he was, caged in, not away to ever be free again. I thought that was the most satisfied. I'd give that man a hundred dollars more than he paid for the evil if he'd let me open that door every night. All the things that he was born to stay in those blue skies. But he looked up at him, but it couldn't look. Somebody had put him in a cage. I thought that was a sad sight. But brother, when I see men and women who are born to be sons and daughters of God, placed in their place of denomination and theology, that they say the days of marriage are past one, and to keep them away from the real thing of God, walking around out here trying to satisfy that blessed hunger that God put in you the first act of him, and satisfy the very thoughts and drinking and joining churches and all these things and things. That's the saddest sight I ever seen. You are trying to be men in the dark to follow the young father and follow the unknown. God made you thus. Not to be saved in their mind denomination. Don't believe in miracles. I don't care what your denomination does. Your Savior says so. That settles it. Don't let no man touch in the cage. You don't need any cage. You need to be free. You, the reason you are suffering is because you are fallen evil. The reason that you love to do that is because God made you that. You can say two steps in a cookie cup. You are made to be an evil, a fine, a sky. The heavens of God are changing on earth to the power of the living God. You are made to be like other birds. That's what's the matter tonight. That's what your hearts are hungering for. You should get loose and get free because you are evil to begin with. An eagle is an eagle to start with. He is born an eagle. That's what makes him hunger and thirst for righteousness. But as long as you're standing in a cage, it says the days of miracles have passed. 
Oh, they don't listen to those fanatics. They go to buy you. They go bad to the Holy Ghost. There's nothing better than the Holy Ghost. Don't you believe that? Don't you believe that? There is a man who takes the prize to open the door and can be with you. And try to hold on to his power and to his blessing. That man is Jesus Christ who died to take you out of the devil's strong top and to make you free in Christ Jesus. So you can take the hands of God. What he is. Yet an eagle. All he is. How much different he is from a chicken. But they're both birds. What is a chicken? A chicken is a denominational brother. But he's a chicken. How much different it is than a chicken? The eagle goes just as high as he can and builds his nest in the cleft of the rock. And he gets up there so no predator can get to him. That's the way a real preacher builds his church. As the eagle of God, he builds it up on the world and the spirit of God gave it to the earth. All the old jackers and old short wearers and cigar smokers and two hall gamers can't touch it because he gets them people so high and born in the attention of God that all the old strategies of Elvis Preston are the doctrine that was the church they turn away from because they are people in the house of God. That's the thing that they got the spirit of the living God. The high ambition. Jesus said, we are a city that sits on a hill that gives life to everyone. And the real church of God is built with ambition that won't stop on these earthly organizations. It brings in the power and the resurrection of Christ. He stirs the old chicken nest that we have around here. Right. No, he in the building is. Look how they take care of this sprinkler. Dehydrated, somebody that's putting on kind of sweet powder, all kinds of stuff like that in documenting. What are they? Nothing but a prey. A prey to the weak. A prey to the wolf. A prey to the snake. Everything that comes along. Whether a man that's born in the spirit of God is, they have to be all indoctrinated and born in the of purple, and that purple of purple, who born by the spirit of God, a free man that stands on the and depends on the living God to take care of it. Your eyes are ambition to live for God. Little chicken will get out to the builder nest. They'll build a nest a great big cookie. Put a big bunch of lye on it and put going on everything like that. Just a domesticated bird, that's all there is to it. Once you get the little ones, they don't know nothing about the heavenly. But the evil climbs up there and builds her nest. How many times have I watched them through my binoculars up in the top of the mountain? We ought to watch the evil how she takes care of the bird in this. She'll go out and get great big stick. She'll go right to a little state poop like this, just as high. There's not a slip and there's nothing can get to her. I'm so glad that the church of the living God built the same way. It's built above all the things of the world. It's so high that it causes them to even look at it no more. If you love the world, the things of the world, the love of God's not even in them. That's right. And then this old eagle will take these big sticks and how she'll put them into little crevices and she'll bend them around with a car. Then she'll go to dry vines and she'll wrap them around and tie that nest together with a tight so the wind can't blow it. All of God takes care of his own. And then she'll go out and she wants everything real closely for her babies that's coming on. So when she kills sheep or rabbits, she'll bring that stuff in. And she'll take a big beat and stuff them through stickery places all full of rabbit skin, all full of beef skin, and make it real soft and cozy. That's the way God does when he brings them to be shivered into his care. He always makes the nest cozy, all the beef with everything, all the things is laid right away. You just a beast when you're born again. God cares for you. Then how she takes care of those little fellows, watches them, feeds them, takes care of them, she goes out and gets she, she goes and gets the feet, she watches her die. And evil feet off, spiritual evil feet from the word of the living God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Man shall not live by denomination. He shall not live by creeds or by prayers, 
He shall live by the word of God that every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So, he don't have the word anymore. He can't stand it. He's not, he's not a buzzard. He's evil. Notice. Bang. After a while, it comes to a place that these old eagles begin to cut more feathers. How delighted the mother is to see these feathers in the little eagles. That's why they become pretty good sized feathers. Now remember, they've never been out of that nest. And that old mother eagle is determined that her kids will not be chickens. They're going to have the habits of chickens. I'm so glad of that. That God's children, God's determined by the Holy Ghost that his spiritual children will not be strong or denominated so called Christians. He's determined of that. And after they get the feathers out a little bit, then there comes a time that they call the spring of the nest. I've watched it many times. That old mother eagle will come down one day, she'll look over and she'll tell us, and she'll say, All right, she'll get me stand up. She'll stand up on her nest. She'll take those great deep wings of her, and she'll go to clean that nest just as hard as she can. Why? After a while, she's going to take those little needles and a solo flight. We're not going to be chickens or spam. Days and miracles is past, and there's no such a thing as this and that. And, but she's going to give them a solo flight. And if those feathers are loose, they'll break the nest. So she has to fan all the loose feathers off of them with her own wings before she can take them on the soil side. Then I'm telling you, if the city calls the church, it will need a wing thing that's right now. Look at all the loose feathers off of it. That's right. Two loose. Even doing the things in the world. All these churches are guilty of the same thing. From one to the other. And notice, he has to get those feathers out of him. And if they don't, he'll break the neck. And he's too many loose feathers. And she, she took, she's got to equip it to do it with. She's got two big wings. When God's got to equip it to do it with, both over the New Testament, Jesus Christ has been lifted in the air forever. What do you think takes place when those little eagles have been down in that path in the rock? Covered by their mother all the time, when the first time they feel the mighty rushing wind coming down. <laughs> but somehow God has a way of turning this by a mighty rushing wind. He went up the air, came across, and meeting the middle, mighty rushing wind, and the Holy Ghost to turn the new setting out of the Pentecostal church. You know what to do. You should have to stretch the feeling of the rest of you. And you know what you said is saying now. You can say a thing of pressing that. And you're sitting before you try to think about it. Well, one of you can take it. Well, you take the little hand and pull out of there, she disintegrates it. That's why she can't stand it. She's got to be a, a evil or she can't stand it. You can't take it. And you've got to be born again before you can ever understand it. She's a supernatural. Right. So the old evil stands there and she fans the feathers all out of her. Oh, brother, what a time. Then the next thing she does, she sits in there and takes all those little sheep skins and things that she stuffed out of that nest, takes the deep and throws them out on the hill. She used to prove them they're not going to be chickens, and she's going to make that nest so miserable for them that they have to get out. So then you have these standing on thorns. Every time you stay home, it's a thorn. Every day it's a thorn. Every day you stop, it's a thorn. God does that for a purpose. Well, we need to want to make them that way. And if you want from the mighty rest of hit you, and you begin to glorify God, every one of you was a thorn. You try to take your testimony and bring the word up. And he sees you take your best friend and says, huh, that's your whole little head. A thorn. You get ready. You're going to take a ride. That's what I'm going to do. God's just making you ready. You know, listen to the pastor say, Pastor, last night I was praying and all at once something happened to me. My life changed and I feel different. I hear it. Don't you go stretching out around our church. Another song. He makes the nest so miserable till you have to get out. You just can't take it anymore. Because if you don't take that, that shows you wasn't able to begin with. Then after all, when you get to all, you get them all dissatisfied, then the old mother evil comes up to the nest. And you know what? Even the little evil hasn't seen what size bird his mama is. So she gets on the nest, you ought to see it, it's a real drama. And she gets on the nest, and she goes to cooing to him. Cooing to him, and eagles walk. Oh, that 
sounds good. Everything stretches out open to me. See how good I am? Then little fellow says, that's the old mama. What a great place you are. Well, some of them, and you can stretch flesh in your feet across your wing, wing spread. They can pick up the path and pack it away. And that doesn't mean you can never realize what a mother you had. I'm telling you, you're going to look up to her. And she begins to show her power. Why do you keep her setting your feet tonight? You start to smirk and prepare the period. The doctor is changing down to you, Penny Carson. It's the call of God Pounder. Throw your feet in a thunder. Take those in power and just put out your lungs. That's what it takes on a spot one of these days. And you want to know how great that was. Did you ever turn it out and look at the solar system? How did those little old stars and moons are sent into insects? Little grains of dust on his feathers. Sure, how great thou art in faith, can he ever say? What type of a pastor would that be? How great thou art! He wants you to look at him. Why? He wants you to take you on a ride. He wants you to give something good to him. Because ain't you tired of being a chicken? You want to be a chicken? That's being evil. So then he sets forth his great things. He said, Look how great I am. So he goes, Take the wings. You see how great I am? They feel that cool breeze coming in. That's where a man when he gets down before God and the Holy Spirit begins to move in on him. How great thou art. How great thou art. Trust me. Can you trust me? And the little suffer and wings say, Mama, I'm just like you are. I'm ready. She's hovering over her nest. She's running over her young. And each one of those little eagles, she throws those big wings down. Each little eagle climbs up there and sets his little paws down in her great big strong wings. Takes his little beak, sets it a hold of the feathers. You couldn't pull it out with a pair of flowers. So now, it has to be the hold of that little one. Oh, blessed be the Lord. Oh, keep God bring things in hand. Nothing in my hand, God bring. Simply feet out, cross out, clean. Let the world say, Holy Lord, it's the magic divine healer. Whatever they wish you, let me hold to God's unchanging hands. Set my hopes in power of me. Not in your merits of any church or any priest or any preacher, but set my faith in the merits of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who set me free from the last sin and death. Heaven, let me hold in his unchanging hands. When I take the sign, as for I and all the little eaglets are gathered on a wing. I like to think of that. I was standing to Gary, Indiana, some time ago, where Brother Gold here from. And they're taking me up to show me the mill, the steel mill. I thought, oh, this is wonderful. I've always wondered how this would be. And each man of these beasts is working these ladies, you know, and shavings on the floor, and a little whistle blows. Every man swept the shavings right out in the middle of the floor from the steel work. Now, I said, what are you going to do, sir? I said, stand here, Mr. Graham, and you'll see something. I said, all right. I stood there. After all, the other whistle blew, the other man went out. And then after all of them went out, he pressed a little button. Now, I heard something coming in the distance. Roar, roar, roar. I thought, what's that? And down through the time, it was a great, big magnet. And as it crossed over that floor, right down that aisle, all those things picked right up on it and went out to the people over it and demagnetized it and it dropped in to be molded over again. I said, Hallelujah! He said, Sir? I said, I said, Hallelujah! And he praised our God. He said, I didn't know it. I said, Why did that stuff go? He said, It's to be molded and made over it. I said, I'm thinking of another great magnet. That's coming someday. And so take this old cross of a body of mine. It's going to hold it over again. I said, I want to ask you something. Why didn't all those children go? He said, sir, some of them are leaving. It was not magnetized. I said, oh, he's wrong. I said, what's the matter with that piece of iron bag and go? He said, it's burning down. I said, that's it. That's it. Oh, don't be demagnetized or be brought it down to some truth, but be free in Christ when he comes and the Spirit goes to pick you up and make you a new creature and mold you into his own fashion. And I notice, this old eagle is a door to open, he squeals three or four times, he is squeaky, 
and she set her big wings out, and she took those little birds up, and she went up, 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 up. The air got thinner, they would have perished if there wasn't either. But she knew what there was, they were her own breed. God never makes you a promise in here to step out on us. He'll give you breed, breath to breathe. He'll give you work to stand. He'll give you grace. Just step out of here and you a promise. See if he won't do it. And so we so high, way in the air. Now here's the funny part about it. When she got up there, you know what she done? She struck another one off. Off of her wings. They weren't going to be chicken. They had to fly. But those little the eagles, they had turned up five damn trip flop. Wasn't matter. They were topsy turvy and everything else. They didn't care. They were flying. You say she, she go away from them? No, sir. She just stole it out to one side and began to watch them. Oh, my. If one of them got out of paper, she'd pick him up. Amazing grace would pick him up and lift him right back up to be an indigo. Oh, he's a real. His eyes are in the battle. And I know he got to me. I may not be so I may be all out of pain, but I'm trying to fly in high heaven. I'm going to put a cross of Jubilee, dropping my Pentecostal wings, just dropping in the air as hard as I can, and seeing the place of God's blessings. I don't know how to do it. I need mean, to tell you this. Yeah, he's not scared. The nature's in man. He's a leader to begin with. He's not afraid. And then he turns over and upside down and begins to fall out of pain. She reaches right down, picks him up, bears him right back up in the place of him. That's what he does. So he learns how to fly. Oh, how much different this with the chicken. Her food. She just walks around the barnyard with him, earth down, that's all she knows. One day a guy was going to set a hill. And he only had 14 legs. How many is a second? 15, is it? And he couldn't find that other egg, so they say he found an eagle's egg. And he took that eagle's egg and put it out in the old hill. And when all of us had stopped, that was a funny looking little creature that had chicken that they ever saw. Just about, that's about the way you get them in a church, about one out of a second. That's done. You know, they were all looking over them. So you see. Oh, we're going down to the ladies' face society. Thank you, I don't really want to go. So if you want to play pool tonight, don't think so. They're about one of a second, that's about the way they run. So he was a strange thing to watch this little eagle. How he'd look around, he couldn't learn the habits of those chickens. Well, they scratched him in the earth house. He didn't know anything about that. These people down here drinking little sociable drinks and going to horse races and watching the horses God sing Elvis Presley and he loves Cece and don't go to prayer meetings. Are you a Christian thing there, Samuel? Well, you know, Well, you just said, I don't get that. There's just something about me that wouldn't be. I'm so glad of that, I'm too. I just don't understand why they do it. That is the evil to begin with. He was born in evil. Nobody might have been born in evil. He was here. But he's in So you know, he was get around there and scratch and eat all those things and eat all the carcass that wasn't real good. The little eagle just couldn't stand that diet and couldn't understand why they did. So one day he realized that in the barn yard and just couldn't understand why everything was going like that and why he had to be the, the ugly bird of the month then. So much different the rest of them. And the old man who had to fly over the barn yard. She knew that was her name. And she screamed, Johnny! You're not a chicken! You're a man! Oh, I remember when I heard it. <laughs> Come out of it! Come out from among them! Be separated, says God. Touch out your unclean things. Now I'll receive you. You'll be sons and daughters to me, and I'll be God to you. Don't let yourself up with unbelievers. So come out of it! Whoever was is coming out of time, it'll be right now. Come out and separate yourself from the things of the world. That little eagle said, Hey, that sounds evil. Maybe he went to church one night and hollered somebody and said, Hey, man, glory to God, hallelujah. That sounds just right. Just in his nature, you see. He's an eagle to start with. You know what happened? He 
Sönlüzün hayat kurumu nasıl atıyor? Nasıl anlıyorsun? Yok! Nasıl anlıyorsun? 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 Nasıl anlıyorsun?
یہ سمجھ بتا رہی ہے بات اور بات کی ہوئی نہیں چلی ہے جی پر اپنے ہوں گے نہیں ہیلی جی سب میں ہوں گے آدھا ہوں گے یہ نبی سینی میں آئے کہ فالز نو میں سینی میں بڑھا رہا ہوں گے If God will explain to me and let me know that you touch his daughter, stop happening, I won't speak to you unless that angel is saying that right over you. That light, you ever see the picture of it? Well, that's the exactly what's making you feel where you are. He's right over you. I've never seen you in my life. That's right. If it is, you've got your hand on the stranger to you. Some of the doctors got a screaming spirit, which is a daughter inside your head. You're not from this country. You come from a place that's below here. You come from Orlando, Florida. That's exactly right. Just say it to Lord. <laughs>